Hey guys, Mike Hayden here. In this video today, I'm gonna to run through some new features for the Victron ESS, which I'm pretty damn excited about. Now these new features is a dynamic ESS, which actually allows you to buy and sell energy at high and low prices. I'll explain, I've been playing around with this for a few years, not through Victron. I've been doing it through a couple of different platforms. And Victron's actually now integrating that with the platform. It's actually not available right now in Australia, the US, technically. Uh, it can be used if you've got a bit of skill and knowledge, but it just doesn't automatically work in Australia or the US. So let's jump into this and I'll show you a couple of new features and a few other bonuses as well that Victron have dropped. Let's just go in here. Um, so yeah, so another thing as well, if you're really interested in sodium ion batteries, for me, we've been doing some R&D for this company, Feridian, here in Australia. It's an amazing product. I'm really, really excited about it. Towards the end, I'll put a link. Um, it's actually a battery that has no rare earth metals to basically build the battery. So it's sodium ion, and ideally it's going to be a lot cheaper when it finally hits the market commercially. A lot of the big players are playing with it. So yeah, towards the end of the video, there'll be a link there about the sodium ion batteries and our R&D and sharing our information we've ever done with this here. So you come in, go to your settings. We want to come down, we want to find our ESS. We go... Okay, so before we jump there, I'll just talk about the peak shaving and what that's all about. So peak shaving is a new feature that Victron have added to ESS. What that allows you to do is basically keep your batteries charged and at moments in time when your load is too big for you know the AC input, it actually can help. You know, so if you're connected to the grid and you turn a bigger load on, you've got a 20 amp load, a 20 amp input from your AC input, the Victron can actually discharge the batteries for those periods of time and help support that load. So it's a really good feature there that literally, if you don't don't have the biggest input coming into your Victron, it'll allow you to discharge your batteries while keeping them charged and topped up all the time as well. So it's more designed that for someone's you live in a really unreliable area for the grid and you want blackout protection. It allows you to have your batteries charged all the time, but if you too turn on big loads, it'll actually allow the Victron to help support that power assist mode in those settings. So. Um, that's a new feature there. Come down. Okay, dynamic ESS. Let's get into this. So to really make this beneficial for you, now for me here in Australia, I use a company called getlocalvolts.com. The link will be in the description below. Now with local vaults, how it works, it's a peer-to-peer -peer trading platform. So I can buy and sell my energy to mates, friends, family. So it puts you on the wholesale market. Now, if you're not on the wholesale market in Australia, there's a couple of different options. And sometimes the wholesale market in Australia can be complicated because the prices change every five minutes and there's actually even a 60 second market. Uh, Amber Electric used the half an hour market. So as you can see, there's all these different perimeters and complications. So sometimes maybe just sticking with a normal retailer and having, you know, of a day, you've got your off peak technically these days is off peak and then you've got your night, um, that peak usage from that 5 and 7 p.m. here in Australia or 8 p.m and energy prices are through the roof, and then at 10 o'clock they go back to off-peak again. So as you can see here in Australia right now, there's a lot of talk about energy prices going through the roof, and that's actually not true. The prices of energy actually come down. It's probably one of the cheapest I've seen the whole time markets in a very, very long time. Energy company right now are making an absolute fortune, because here in Australia, the energy prices become really expensive, because the majority of our energy is actually used between five and eight o'clock at night. So yes, the prices there have skyrocketed, uh, I've seen them really, really high in those periods of time. But the reality is, outside of that, the energy prices are really, really cheap. Solar and renewables are actually driving down the energy prices so much. On the weekends in Australia, and even in the middle of the day in Australia, you can actually get paid if you're on the wholesale market. So if you're using getlocalvolts.com, you can get paid to use energy during the day. So something to think about and be aware of, um, that it's a lot of smoke and mirrors with energy prices and everything all over the media, that the prices have gone up. Renewables are actually driving the prices down. The way I would say that renewables are driving the prices up is because all the gas, coal mines, all these guys need to charge more to make more money. So in those periods of time when they're needed, they are driving the prices up. So that's how I'd say renewables are driving the prices up because of a day, they're making the energy prices so cheap that all the coal mines and the gas turbines and all these on-demand power sources that help power the network and keep our lights on for us, they need to make more money because they're making a lot less of a day. So in those peak periods, they need to charge a lot more. So that's how I'd say renewable energy prices are probably driving up prices in those periods. And that's why adding a battery could really make sense to your situation. And honestly, a disclaimer that there, 
very, very, very rarely do batteries make sense financially. So just something to think about. The way I think about batteries, if you want batteries, you want it because you want cold beer and aircon where no one else has got it. So something to think about there. Um, so batteries to me is all about reliability and being self-sufficient. I find when I look at all my numbers and how I've saved money over the years, I've just saved money with a battery, not trying to buy and sell and be smart. Just being self-sufficient overnight is um, my priority. So let's get into the Dynamic ESS and I'll show you how it works. So, um, and what countries it's available in. So let's go turn this on. Okay, so in here you can set up auto. So what this is actually gonna do, so it you can set up with auto and then it'll buy and sell. And this is probably more auto with a wholesale market which is probably gonna work better. Um, then you've got the opportunity to buy only. Now this is probably, in my opinion, the best way to do it. Now I see a lot of people in Australia have a company called Amber Electrics. They've got some really good technology and it's all about they buy really cheap and try and sell your battery prices at a really high price. And one of the biggest problems that that would there is they get bad information. So what can happen, it can charge the battery really cheap of a day and then later on go to sell it or keep your battery charged all day and then things change. So say for example, just you know the weather might not be as cold as what they think so everyone doesn't turn the heaters on or the afternoon might not be as hot as what everyone thinks so people don't turn their air conditioners on. What you'll notice when you'll see on the media a lot of cheap energy prices, and you'll see coming up right now in Australia, it's you know the, almost the start of September. You're going to see September, October, November is going to see this lot of like South Australia has been completely self-sufficient, run 100% renewable energies. Um, New South Wales is you know 80%, 90% renewable energy, which right now, as you can see here in this image here. The grid is actually right now powered by 70% renewable energy. Now, the reason September, October, November, you see a lot of this stuff because the weather's actually amazing. And with that amazing weather, people are not turning the air conditioners on. Solar's really cranking and pumping energy back to the grid. We're not really using the energy demand that we do use. And come January, February here in Australia for us, when it's getting really hot and we're using a lot of energy, that percentage really drops because you know, we've got a lot more energy demand on the grid than what we're actually producing. So that's why the numbers look really good between that September, October, because the weather's actually amazing. It's beautiful weather. You don't need a heater. You don't need an air conditioner. And it's just right for the solar production. And also for us here in Australia, in the northern parts of Australia, it's our wet season. So we've got January, February, we get the build up, lots of cloud cover and stuff like that. So we've got, it's even hotter, it's humid, you want to run the air con, so the solar's just not doing as good. So that's why the percentages don't look so good. So using this buy feature is probably the best solution in my opinion, because all you're going to do is when energy is cheap, you're just going to buy and top up your system. That's it. Um, you're going to be self-sufficient. My whole thinking behind what I do, I'm grid connected. The way I think about my excess solar, I like to feed it back and share it with the community because I'm not going to do nothing with it. If you're off grid and your panels are off, your panels actually turn off. There's nowhere for the energy. I personally would rather stay connected to the grid and I'd rather see the 10 houses up the road from my street, make sure that, you know, and they actually don't have solar. So of a day when my solar system's feeding all this energy back to the grid, those 10 houses up there are living on my solar system. I don't really care about the financials. To me, it's about the bigger picture and making the grid more renewable and more green. So that's one of the biggest reasons that for me, I don't care about the financials. I get paid nothing to feed it back to the grid. Some days I get charged is the reality. To me, it's more about making sure that the more people that live on renewable energy, the better it is actually for the community and for the whole of everyone involved. So that buy feature for me, I'm, about, I'm happy to always buy it when it's cheap and I want to keep my batteries to be self-sufficient as possible. So I just want to live on renewable energy as much as possible. So I don't want to sell my energy when it's really expensive in that peak times. There's a few times I have, I've seen the prices go through the roof and I thought, you know what, the way I think about it, it's not about the money. I want to push it back to help the grid because the end of the day, the more batteries can push back to the grid and help in those periods of time, it's so less likely everyone's going to have a blackout. And that's what it's about. And the reality is, is humans do things for a financial incentive. So the way that networks are structured, and that's why the prices change is of a day that is a lot of solar, they don't want it. So they charge people not to send it back to the grid. Overnight, the prices are really expensive because they don't want you to use it. Or if you're going to help support the network, they're going to pay to help support the network. So I know a lot of people are saying, hey, look, you know, price are through if energy companies are trying to rip us off and that sort of stuff. And I completely understand that. But also what they're trying to do is because human behavior, when we get charged more for something, we don't like doing it. So that's what they're trying to do is increase the prices to try and get people not to use energy in those peak periods. So something to think about. So for me, the way I use the buy feature is I just, I want to buy when it's cheap all the time. I want to be self-sufficient on batteries. That's it. 
Now the sell feature, now this is where you can actually have this on and when you have it on selling, that there you're allowed to sell. So you can actually sell it at time. So you, the way you think about it, you'll charge all the time from your solar system, get your batteries topped up, and then if the prices go through the roof, you have to set triggers and things like that with your energy retailer, and this changes all over the world, you'll be able to set prices that trigger that there to sell at certain times when the prices go to a certain point. As you can see, since I've been shooting this video and we've been going for like three minutes, the prices have actually gone from five cents to six cents just here in Australia in that five minute period. So you can actually see how they change every five minutes. It's something to think about. And you can see right now in Australia, we have 12% renewables in the grid. Yeah, so basically this is a really good feature that you could you know, buy and sell and play around. Like I said, my opinion, the last few years, I really love the Amber product. I love the concept of it. I think they just get bad information from the network. I just don't think it's right ready just yet. So the way I always think about doing this stuff is just about being as self-sufficient as possible. Of a day, when energy prices are really cheap, I'm buying renewables, that's when it's really cheap of a day. And most of the time for me, I've got a 25 kilowatt solar system. Very rarely do I never need to buy excess energy when it's cheap. Uh, the only time I really do buy excess energy when it's cheap is I charge my car. So I might be charging my batteries flat out, uh, heating a hot water flat out, and then also we might want to plug the car in and charge the car. So there's another really good feature I want to show you, which this has actually been a game changer for me in my life, and uh, it's really helped with uh, a couple of R&D projects I'm doing. So I'm going to show you this here. Uh, I'll go back to the start and I'll show you this before we get into that. Okay, so um, here we go. So in my house, if you have to look, this is perfect timing. The hot water's coming on heating, so it's five in the morning and the hot water's getting heated up. So these AC loads here and these critical loads. So what we're going to do this new feature, this is my hot water coming on right now to heat the hot water up. And as you can see, oh, it's gone back to the grid batteries. I don't know if we can do this. But what I can actually do, I can come down here, self-consumption from battery only. Okay, all system loads. Here we go. So all system loads or critical loads. So if I turn this on to critical loads only, we go back here. We go back to the start. So what's going to happen, we'll actually see this hot water still on perfect. Okay, this is good timing. Um, you think I would have planned this, eh? So um, as you see the AC loads here, the system will just take a little bit um, to fire up. It's still actually taking those from the batteries. And there we go, it's dumped the batteries. So now it's actually pulling the AC load. I think the hot water's turned off. <laughs> oh no, there we go. It's on, it's doing its thing. Um, so what it allows you to do, so the way my house is wired, I've got my battery loads, and then I've got the, the hot water on the input, and I've got an energy meter right at the start so I can see everything that's going on. Now, what that actually allows me to do, I can actually choose that when things are really, really good, I can go, right, I wanna just use my batteries to heat my hot water, I'm happy tonight to go to bed, and if it, it gets heated from the hot water, excellent, I'm okay with that. What it actually allows you to do that, if you turn it on and go, okay, well, I only want my critical loads, so I only want my lights, my TVs and fridges and those sort of loads to run from the um, batteries. I can actually just turn that off and actually stops my hot water coming from my batteries, which is great. So this is probably fluffed around a bit a lot at the moment what's going on the screen because the battery is so low. I think we're pretty much at a point where the system goes back to the grid anyway at 20%. I think that's what we set it for with this R&D test for these 30 mine batteries. Um, so yeah, so with the critical load thing, what you can actually do is, yeah, just decide what big loads and stuff. And in times when things are great, so rather than have to rewire or fluff around program, you go, okay, well, I'm happy, it's sunny, things are good, I've got lots of batteries in my, lots of storage in my batteries. I'm happy overnight to heat the hot water from my batteries. If not, you just flick that switch on and then the hot water. And for me, the way we use in the house, why it really changed how I could do stuff at home is I could actually set up a night so when the energy prices are really cheap. And that's how we heat our hot water at night. Um, we heat it around when the prices drop, you know, down to that five, six cents a kilowatt hour overnight. We're heating our hot water from that there for a period of time, just quickly in the morning, just so it's topped up and hot enough and stuff like that. So everyone has their morning showers. It's sort of got a bit of a top up in the morning before everyone has their showers. So guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, we'd really appreciate if you got something in this video. And if you really get something in this video, if you share it with a friend, we'd really appreciate that. Any comments or questions, post down below. I actually answer every single question myself personally. So any comments or questions down there you want to learn about this stuff, post down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you. And until next time, stay energized.